9.1 goes over properties of radicals. With these radicals, you have a couple different things to t keep in mind when you are simplifying them. There is a number underneath the radical sign. That radical sign kind of looks like a little check mark with a long line to the right of it. Within that number that's underneath the radical sign, you're going to find the prime factorization of that number and then the index of your radical, so that little number on the outside, if there isn't one, it's invisible too, tells you how many of the same numbers to group up. Whichever numbers that you group up, you're gonna pull one out to represent that group underneath the radical sign that you found the prime factorization of. From there, whatever you pull out, you multiply. Whatever doesn't match up with another term, that's the same number or the same variable, you will keep underneath the radical. So what does this all mean? For example, one, we are told to simplify each expression. For A, we're given the, ab I'm sorry, the square root of 108. Our invisible index here is a two, so we want to group up sets of two. Find the prime factorization of the number underneath the radical sign. That 108, if you didn't know exactly what goes into it evenly, you know that it's an even number, we can divide by 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 2 goes into 8 4 times. From here, that 54 is divisible by 9, which is 6 and 9. The 6 is 2 and 3. The 9 is 3 and 3. So this is really the square root of the prime factorization of 208, which is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So if our invisible index here is a 2, we're grouping up sets of 2. So you have two 2's here, you have two 3's here. Because you grouped up a set of 2, you're going to pull one out. Because you grouped up a set of 3, you'll pull another out, or, or sorry, a 3 out, and you will multiply those two numbers. From there, that three that didn't pair up with another three stays underneath the square root sign. So then you just multiply your two and your three and we get six square root three. For example, B, we are given the square root of nine X cubed. So again, we're gonna find the prime factorization of nine X cubed. If you wanted to separate this, this is the same exact thing as saying the square root of nine times the square root of x cubed. You don't have to do that, but it's totally up to you if you'd like to. That nine is three times three. That x cubed is x times x times x. So this is the same thing as saying the square root of three times three times x times x times x. We don't have an index here, so it's an invisible two. The two threes pair up. The two x's pair up. So this is going to be 3 times x. That x that doesn't pair up with another one has to stay underneath that radical sign. So 3 times x is just 3x times the square root of x. Another way to have done example b, because you have that variable underneath the radical sign, your invisible index there is 2. So if you take the exponent, that 3, and you divide it by 2, you would get 1 with a remainder of 1. That 1x goes outside, the remainder of 1 stays inside the radical. For example, C, we have the square root of 24. So again, we're going to find the prime factorization of 24. 24 is 4 times 6, the 4 is 2 times 2, and the 6 is 2 times 3. So this is the same exact thing as saying the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. From here, we do not have an index there, so it's an invisible 2, which means we're going to group up sets of 2. We have two 2's here. We pull one out. The 2 and the 3 do not pair up with another 2 or another 3, so that's going to stay underneath the radical. Again, we are going to multiply whatever we have left over. That 2 times 3 gives us 6, so that's 2 square root 6. For example, D, we have the opposite of the square root of 80. 
Look to see where that negative is. It's outside of your radical, so it's perfectly fine where it's at. You're going to be doing negative 1 times whatever the square root of 80 is. To find the square root of 80, take the prime factorization of it. 80 is 8 and 10. The 8 is 2 and 4. The 4 is 2 and 2. The 10 is 2 and 5. So this is the same exact thing as saying the opposite of the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So now we're going to be doing an invisible, where we have an invisible index of 2, so we group up sets of 2. We have two sets of 2s, or two pairs of 2s. So we're going to take one 2 out, we take the other 2 out, we keep that 5 underneath the radical, and remember we're taking the opposite of this. So that 2 times 2 gives us 4. We keep it with the square root of 5, we apply the negative to that 4, and we just have negative 4 square root 5. For example, e, we are given the square root of 49x cubed. We know off the top of our head, or at least we should know, that the square root of 49 is 7. We then have the x times x times x, which then we would group up a set of 2, because we have an invisible index of 2. So it would be 7x square root x. For example, f, we have the square root of 75 n to the fifth power. Now, I'm going to separate this and say that this is the same thing as 75, the square root of 75 times the square root of n to the fifth power. And work with these separately and then bring them back together. The square root of 75, we have 3 times 25. The 25 is 5 times 5. So this is the same thing as saying the square root of 3 times 5 times 5. Now, I don't have an index on this square root, so it's an invisible 2, which means I pair up sets of 2. The 5s are a pair, so I'm going to pull 1 out to represent both of them. And I have that 3 left over, so it's going to stay underneath the radical. Now, moving back to that square root of n to the fifth power. My invisible index is 2. So we said that another way of doing this, instead of writing out n times n times n times n times n underneath the radical and pairing up sets of 2, I can take that index, which is an invisible 2, and divide the power by that index, which means I'm going to have n to the fifth power divided by 2. Whatever my remainder is is going to stay underneath my radical. Whatever is not my remainder goes out in front of the radical. So if I do 5 divided by 2, I'm left with 2 remainder 1. So my n squared is going to go outside the radical. The 1 that's left over stays underneath the radical. From here, we're just going to combine these two. When we combine these two and we multiply them, we're just multiplying the two numbers on the outside or the two terms on the outside. And then on the inside, we multiply those two terms. So we're literally doing 5 times n squared times the square root of 3 times n. The 5 times n squared is just 5n squared, and 3 times n gives us the square root of 3n. For our next part of our lesson, we are using the quotient property in order to simplify these radicals. So if we look at example two, we're just simplifying each of, of these expressions. When you have a fraction underneath your radical, you are going to be taking the root of the numerator and dividing it by the root of the denominator. With these, you cannot keep a radical in the denominator of a fraction. So you would have to rationalize the denominator, which I'm not sure if we do that in this section. If not, we will get to it eventually. So. If we look at example 1, we are given the square root of 15 over 64. This is the same exact thing as saying the square root of 15 over the square root of 64. Again, 64 is one of those numbers you should know the square root of. It would be 8. So then you just have to worry about the square root of 15. Your factors of 15 are just 3 and 5. They don't pair up with another 3 or another 5. So it is literally going to stay the square root 
of 15, and we said that the square root of 64 is 8, so that's the square root of 15 over 8. For example, B, we have the square root of 81 over x squared. So again, we're going to rewrite this as the square root of 81 over the square root of x squared. That 81 is 9 times 9, so that square root of 81 is 9. That x squared, remember, if we do x to the second power, our invisible index is 2, and we divide it by that, it's going to give us just x to the first power, which is just 9 over x. If we look at example C, we have the square root of 23 over 9. So again, we're going to rewrite this as the square root of 23 over the square root of 9. 23 is a prime number. We cannot do anything with that. So it's going to stay the square root of 23. The square root of 9 is 3. So this gives us the square root of 23 over 3. For example, D, we have the opposite of the square root of 17 over 100. So again, I'm just going to rewrite this as the opposite of the square root of 17 over the square root of 100. 17, again, is a prime number, so we're going to leave it as the square root of 17. And that square root of 100 is 10. So this is just giving us the opposite of the square root of 17 divided by 10. For example, E, we have the square root of 36 over z squared. So this one is the same thing as saying the square root of 36 over the square root of z squared. Anytime you have the square root of 36, it's always going to be 6. The square root of x squared, z squared, anything squared cancels out. So it's just over z. So 6 over z. For example, f, we have the square root of 4x squared over 64. So again, this is the square root of 4x squared over the square root of 64. We know the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is just x. And then the square root of 64 is 8. So that's 2x over 8. Now this does simplify. So before I say this is my final answer, the 2 and the 8 are both divisible by 2, so the 2 becomes a 1, the 8 becomes a 4. So that's just 1x or x over 4. Now, you could have also simplified this from the very start. 4 divided by 64 is 1 over 16. So this is literally the same exact thing as saying x squared over 16 underneath your radical. So again, you could have done it either way. You could have simplified first, then taken the square root of the numerator, and then taken the square root of the denominator or done what we did, take the square root of the numerator, take the square root of the denominator, and then simplify. For our next set of examples, we're looking at cube roots now. So our index here is 3, which means we have to take pairs of 3. So it's, not, it's no longer pairs of 2. We have to take care, into consideration that index and group up sets of that many of the same number. So example 3a, we are given the cube root of negative 128. Remember what we said in the very beginning, if you take the square root of a negative, it's no solution. Any root that is even, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on, you cannot have a negative underneath the radical. However, an odd root, you can have a negative under the answer, and your answer is just going to stay negative. So. What I like to do with these is I like to circle my negative first. I realize my index is odd. I'm okay. I can continue on with this. My answer is just going to be negative. That 128 is divisible by 4. It's going to be 4 and 32. The 32 is 4 and 8. The 8 is 4 and 2. Now, this is not prime factorization. However, I do have three fours, and I'm looking for groups of three. So because I'm looking for groups of three, these four threes pair up. So I can take a four out. I take that negative out. That two stays underneath the radical. Remember to put your root. So that's just negative four cube root two. For example, B, we have the cube root of 125 x squared. So for this one, that 125 is 5 times 25 
the 25 is 5 times 5. If we are looking for groups of 3, we have three fives, so that 5 is going to stay on the or go on the outside. However, we still have to do the cube root of x to the 7th. If we do x to the 7th divided by 3, that gives us x to the 2nd with a remainder of 1. 7 divided by 3 is 2 with a remainder of 1. So that x to the 2nd is going to go on the outside. That x to the, or sorry, just that x of that 1 stays on the inside. So this is going to be 5 times x squared times the cube root of x. For example C, we are given the cube root of y over 216. Now with this one, again, it's the same exact thing as saying the cube root of y over the cube root of 216. That 216, if we find the prime factorization of it, 4 is divisible by it. 4 goes into 21 5 times with 1 left over. 4 goes into 16 4 times. The 4 is 2 times 2. The 54 is 6 times 9. 6 is 2 and 3. 9 is 3 and 3. We're looking for groups of 3. So there's 3 2s. There's 3 3s. This is 2 times 3, which is 6. So this is the cube root of y over 6. For example, D, we have the cube root of 8x to the 4th power over 27y cubed. So with this, we're going to be taking the cube root of 8 times the cube root of x to the 4th over the cube root of 27 times the cube root of y cubed. Something that you should have realized by now. If your index is the same as your power, it cancels each out. With that cube root of y cubed, the power and the index are the same, so it cancels the radical out as well as the power. That cube root of 8 is 2. That cube root of x to the 4th power, if we do x to the 4th power divided by 3, 3 goes into 4 one time with a remainder of 1. So that x comes out, the one that's left over stays underneath the radical. From there, you have the cube root of 27, which is 3, and then the cube root of y cubed, we said, was y. So it's just the 2x cube root of x over 3y. For example, E, we have the cube root of 54. For this one, we're going to find the prime factorization of the 54. We have 6 and 9 that goes into it evenly. Then the 6 is 2 and 3. The 9 is 3 and 3. Our index is 3, so we're grouping up sets of 3. The only thing that groups up here is the 3, so that 3 comes outside. The cube root of 2 is stays. For example, f, we have the cube root of 16x to the 4th power. For this one, I'm going to separate it into the cube root of 16 times the cube root of x to the 4th power. The 16 I find the prime factorization of. I know it's 4 times 4. The 4 is 2 times 2. I'm looking for a group of 3. So I have 3 2s here. I pull the 1 out to represent those 3 2s. That 2 that's left over stays underneath the radical. For the cube root of x to the 4th power, I'm going to do x to the 4th power divided by 3. It gives us x to the first with a remainder of 1. So that's x with the cube root of x. From here, I'm going to multiply the 2 and the x since they're on the outside. And then underneath, we have the cube root of 2 times x. 2 times x is 2x with the cube root of 2x. For the next part of our lesson, we are rationalizing denominators. 
When we rationalize denominators, we want to simplify whatever we can to begin with. And then we are going to take into consideration the index of the radical that we're working with. That index of the radical we're working with tells us how many times to multiply that denominator by itself in order to get rid of the radical. What you do to the bottom of your fraction, you must do to the top of the fraction as well. So if we look at example A under example 4, we have the square root of 5 over the square root of 3n. You cannot simplify the square root of 5. You cannot simplify the square root of 3n. So what we're going to do to rationalize this, we are going to multiply the bottom of your denominator by the amount of times that your index is of that radical. So your index here is an invisible 2. So you need that square root of 3n twice in order to get the square root to cancel out. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top as well. So we're going to multiply the top, that square root of 5, by the square root of 3n. From here, the 5 times 3n stays underneath the radical. On the bottom, you have the square root of 3n times the square root of 3n. So that's the same exact thing as saying 3 times n times 3 times n. From here, the top, 5 times 3, 15. Keep the n, put the square root over it. In the denominator, you have two 3s, you have two n's. So that's just 3n. From there, you cannot simplify anything else because the numerator is underneath the radical. The square root of 15, is you can't do. It's just the square root of 15, so you leave it alone. With these, whatever's underneath the radical cannot be simplified by something that's not underneath the radical. So yes, 15 is divisible by 3. However, because they're both under, or sorry, they're both not under a radical, you cannot do anything with that 15. For example, B, we have 2 over the square root, or sorry, 2 over the cube root of 9. You cannot take the cube root of 9. The only factors of 9 are 3 and 3. That's 2, not 3 of the same number. Your index here is 3. So you are going to multiply the cube root of 9 by itself three times in order to cancel out the radical. Now you added on two cube roots of 9 on the bottom of your fraction to multiply. You're going to do the same exact thing on the top. So we have the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9 being multiplied by that 2. 2 times the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9 is just 2 times the cube root of 9 times 9. On the bottom, you have the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9. From here, we're looking for groups of 3. You have 3 9s, so that cancels out the radical, and you just have a 9 in the denominator. However, the numerator, that cube root of 9 times 9, you can simplify that as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Each of those 9's is 3 times 3. So if you're looking for the cube root, you want a group of 3. You're going to pull out that 3. The one that doesn't match up with two other 3's stays underneath the radical. So you're going to multiply this 3 cube root 3 by the 2. Keep it over 9. From here, we're going to have 6 cube root 3 over 9. Now, with that, your 6 is not underneath the radical. Your 9 is not underneath the radical. You can simplify that. They are both divisible by 3. So the 6 becomes a 2. The 9 becomes a 3. So this is just giving us 2 cube root 3 over 3. So example 4c, we have 1 over the square root of 5. And again, we are rationalizing these denominators. In order to do this, think, what's my index on that square root of 5? 
It's an invisible 2, so I need two of the same square roots on the bottom in order to cancel that radical out. What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top as well. So this gives us the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 times 5. We have two 5s there, so that radical cancels out. And we have the square root of 5 over 5. For example, D, we have the square root of 10 over the square root of 3. So again, that root or that index on that square root of 3 is an invisible 2. So we need two of the same in order to cancel that out. And what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. That square root 10 times the square root of 3, we just multiply the 10 and the 3, keep it underneath the radical. On the bottom, we have 3 times 3 underneath the radical now. So those threes pair up. Your factors of 10 are just 2 and 5. So no factors pair up that are the same. So it's going to be the square root of 30 over 3. For example, E, we have 7 over the square root of 2x. Now, this square root of 2x, we're going to multiply it by itself because it's a square root and do the same on top. This is just going to leave us with 7 times the square root of 2x over 2x. So as you can see in the examples that we did before this, when we multiply that square root by itself, it cancels out the radical, and the only thing you're left with is what's underneath the original square root, which is why I don't necessarily write it down a second time here and just realize, okay, I'm multiplying it by itself. It cancels out the radical and the second square root, so I just have the 2x left. Example F, we have the square root of 2y squared over 3. This is the same exact thing as saying the square root of 2y squared over the square root of 3. Now we can simplify the top there, and it just becomes y square root 2 over the square root 3. The denominator here is that square root of 3. We cannot have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to multiply it by itself to the top and the bottom. So this becomes y square root 2 times 3, which is 6, all over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. And again, like we mentioned earlier in this lesson, if you have something like this, like the square root of 6 over 3, they cannot be simplified because that radical is over the 6. Yes, 6 and 3 share a common factor of 3. However, because the 6 is underneath that radical and the 3 is not underneath a square root as well, it cannot be simplified. For example, g, we have 5 over the cube root of 32. Now, that cube root of 32, the index is 3. So we first want to simplify this. We take the 32, find the prime factorization of it. We have 4 and 8. The 4 is 2 and 2. The 8 is 2 and 4. The 4 is 2 and 2. So we're looking for a group of 3. We have a group of 3 here. So this is going to simplify to be 5 over 2 cube root 2 times 2 is 4. So our index is the 3. We want this 3 times in total. So we would multiply it another 2 times to the bottom, which we do to the top as well. From here, we just simplify. So 5 times the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 4 is going to give us 5 times the cube root of 4 times 4. And on the bottom, we have 2 times the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 4. So from here, we have three 4s that are the same on the bottom. We'll pull the 4 out. So on the bottom, we're going to have 2 times 4. On the top, we have 4 times 4, which is the same thing as saying the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. If we're looking for groups of 3, you have three twos that pair up, so this becomes 5 times 2 cube root 2 all over 2 times 4, which is 8. The 5 times 2 gives us 10, so it's 10 cube root 2 all over 8. 
the 10 and the 8 are both not under a radical, so they can simplify by dividing each by 2. So that becomes a 4 on the bottom and a 5 on top. So our total or our final answer for this is going to be 5 cube root 2 all over 4. The next part of this lesson that we are going to look at is conjugates. Conjugates are literally expressions that involve radicals and their opposites almost. Uh, so a conjugate is something like you see here in this bottom description where you have a squared b plus c squared d and then the sign between those two terms just switches to be a minus or a negative and that's the, they're, then those are conjugates. So they're literally the same terms but opposite signs between them. In order to simplify these expressions that we're going to be working with next, you need to use the conjugate. So literally taking the terms and just switching the sign between them will give you the conjugate. If we look at example 5a, we have 7 over 2 square root 3. I'm going to put parentheses around this 2 square root 3, and then I'm going to find the opposite sign that's in the middle of them, which is addition. So the conjugate of 2 minus the square root of 3 is 2 plus the square root of 3. In order to simplify this and rationalize that denominator, we're going to have to multiply the top by the same thing. Now when we multiply these expressions with the 7 times 2, Q, 2 plus the square root of 3, we're just distributing the 7 in. We're doing 7 times 2, which is 14, and then 7 times the square root of 3. When you're multiplying numbers by roots, you cannot multiply the number, that's a whole number, by the root. It has to just go in front. So unless they're like terms, they're both underneath the radical, they don't multiply. So this 7 times the square root of 3 is just 7 square root 3. On the bottom, in your denominator, you have 2 minus the square root of 3 times 2 plus the square root of 3. Foil these out. 2 times 2 gives us 4. 2 times the square root of 3 is a positive 2 square root 3. A negative square root 3 times 2 is negative 2 square root 3. And the square root of 3 times the negative square root of 3 gives us a negative square root of 9. If the numbers are underneath the radical, they can multiply together as long as the index is the same for both. In this case, they're both square roots, so you multiply the 3 times the 3 to give you 9. From here, you just simplify. Up top, you can't do anything with that, so leave it 14 plus 7 square root 3. If you wanted to factor this and leave it 7 times 2 plus the square root of 3, you could have done that because you might be able to simplify it at the end. We don't know that yet, so continue to, to simplify your denominator. The 2, the two square root 3 minus 2 square root 3, they're opposites of one another, so they cancel out. Then you have 4 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, so this is just 14 plus 7 square root 3. Because that 1 doesn't need to be written. For example, B, we have 8 over 1 plus the square root of 3. The conjugate of 1 plus the square root of 3, keep the terms, change the sign between them. So it's going to be 1 minus the square root of 3. Multiply that to the top and the bottom. On the top, you have 8 times 1 minus the square root of 3. So 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times the negative square root of 3 is just negative 8 square root of 3. On the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the negative square root 3 is negative square root 3. The square root 3 times 1 is a positive square root 3. And the square root 3 times the negative square root 3 is a negative square root of 9. You have opposites on the bottom with the negative square root 3 and the positive square root 3, so they cancel. So you're going to have 8 minus 8 square root 3 over 1 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. 1 minus 3 gives us negative 2. You have a negative here, so switch the signs on everything because you don't want a negative in the denominator. And then simplify with the 8s and the 2. The only reason why you can simplify this is because both terms up top are divisible by 2. The 8 is divisible by 2, it becomes a 4. 
so that's negative 4. Then other 8 becomes a 4 as well. So that's just negative 4 plus 4 square root 3. If this helps you to separate it into two fractions, you could do that too. So this is the same exact thing as saying 8 over 2 or 8 over negative 2 minus 8 square root 3 over 2. And then you simplify that way and you're going to get the same exact answer. For example, C, we have 12 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 7. Again, I'm going to put parentheses around the square root of 2 plus the square root of 7. Take the terms and put the opposite sign between them. So instead of them being positive in between, it's going to be a negative. And then multiply the top by the square root of 2 minus the square root of 7 as well. I'm going to distribute the 12 in. We're going to have 12 square root 2 minus 12 square root 7. And this is all going to be over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4. The square root of 2 times the negative square root of 7 is negative square root of 14. The square root of 7 times the square root of 2 is a positive square root of 14. And the square root of 7 times the negative square root of 7 is the, square, the negative square root of 49. The square root of 14 is cancel since they are opposites. So you're going to have 12 square root 2 minus 12 square root 7. All over the square root of, two, of 4 is 2. The square root of 49 is 7. So that's 2 minus 7 on the denominator. From here... You have 12 square root 2 minus 12 square root 7 all over negative 5. You cannot have a negative in the denominator, so change the signs on everything. It's going to be a positive 5, a negative 12 square root 2, and a positive 12 square root 7. So that's 12, negative 12 square root 2 plus 12 square root 7 all over positive 5. For example, D, we have 5 minus the square root of 2 in the denominator, 2 on the top. So I'm going to take the conjugate of that 5 minus the square root of 2. It gives me 5 plus the square root of 2. I'm going to multiply it on the top and the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to distribute the 2 in. It gives us 2 square root 5. Or I'm sorry, 2 times 5 is 10. Plus 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 square root of 2. And then in the denominator, do I have to write out every single term when I do this? No, because I know that they're conjugates of each other. So the middle terms are going to cancel out. So I, if I just do 5 squared minus the square root of 2 squared, that will give me what my denominator is going to be. So that 10 plus 2 square root 2 is going to stay. In the denominator, the 5 squared is 25. The square root of 2 squared is just 2. So 25 minus 2 gives us 10 plus 2 square root 2, all over 23. So moving on to our next example, we're just simplifying expressions. Now with these, I know this is a lot within this just sole lesson that we have here. However, it's all radicals in the like in their entirety. So from adding, subtracting, multiplying, divi not dividing, but rationalizing denominators, all of it, it's all covered here. So for this part of our lesson, we're just simplifying expressions. In order for you to add and subtract rash or radicals, they have to be the same number underneath and the same index. So you cannot combine the I don't want to call them coefficients because they're not, but if you treat them like variables, it's the same concept. So if the number in front of the radical can combine with another that's in front of a radical, the radical itself and the number underneath has to be exactly the same. So if we look at example 8a, we have 5 square root 7 plus the square root of 11 minus 8 square root 7. Your only like terms here, since you cannot simplify any of these radicals, are the 8 square root 7, the negative 8 square root 7, and the 5 square root 7. The reason why is because the square root of 7 in both terms has the same index and the same number underneath the radical. So you can combine the 5 and the negative 8 in front of the square root of 7, and that square root of 11 is just going to stay. So 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Keep it attached to the square root of 7. 
and add the square root of 11 to it. You can't do anything else with this since those radicals are not the same, so you leave it just like you see it. For example, B, we have 10 square root 5 plus the square root of 20. Now that's square root of 20. See if you can simplify it. When we find the prime factorization of 20, that's 4 and 5. 4 is 2 and 2. These 2's pair up. So this can be rewritten as 10 square root 5 plus 2 square root 5. Now we have two terms that are like terms because they both have the square root of 5 attached to them. So add the 10 and the 2. That gives us 12. Keep it attached to the square root of 5. For example, C, we have 6 cube root x plus 2 cube root x. We have a cube root of x on both of these, so we're just going to add the 6 and the 2. It gives us 8 cube root x. For example, D, we have 3 square root 2 minus 6, oh, I'm sorry, minus the square root of 6 plus 10 square root 2. Your like terms here are the 3 square root 2 and the 10 square root 2, so 3 plus 10 gives us 13. Keep it attached to the square root 2 and then just add on that minus 6, or sorry, minus square root 6. E gives us 4 square root 7 minus 6 square root 63. The 6 square root 63, that 63 can be simplified by taking 7 and 9, and the 9 is 3 and 3. So this is really 4 square root 7 minus 6 times 3 square root 7. The 6 times 3 square root 7 gives us 18 square root 7. So we're doing 4 square root 7 minus 18 square root 7, which is negative 14 square root 7. For example, F, we have 4 cube root 5x minus 11 cube root 5x. These two are like terms, so we just simplify it by subtracting those two. 4 minus 11 gives us negative 7. Keep it attached with a cube root of 5x. For the last part, we're just multiplying these radicals, which is something we've already done before. We're just getting a little bit more practice with these. For example, 9a, we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 75. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You could distribute it in that 5 and then simplify, or you can simplify what's inside the parentheses first and then go from there. I want to simplify what's inside those parentheses first. That square root of 3, I cannot simplify. However, that square root of 75 is 3 and 25. So 25 is 5 and 5. So your two 5s pair up. So this can be written as the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 minus 5 square root 3. So you see here inside your parentheses, you have like terms. That square root of 3 has an invisible 1 in front of it. So when you combine these two, you're going to have 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. So square root 5 times negative 4, keep it with the square root of 3. From here, you just multiply the two, and we get negative 4 times the square root of 15. The reason why that we have the square root of 15 is because that 5 is underneath the radical, that 3 is underneath the radical. They multiply with one another since they are, your indexes are the same. That negative 4 just stays in front of the radical. For example, B, we're given the square root of 3 times 8 square root 2 plus 7 square root 32. So again, I want to simplify what's inside my parentheses first before I do anything else. So that square root of 32, I can probably simplify. I find the prime factorization of it. I have 4 and 8. The 8 is 4 and 2. My 4s pair up. So I'm doing the square root of 3 times 8 square root 2 plus 7 times 4 square root 2. The 7 times 4 square root 2 gives us 28 square root 2. So it's the square root of 3 times 8 square root 2 plus 28 square root 2. You have like terms inside the parentheses. So combine the 28 and the 8. We have the square root of 3 times the 8 plus the 28 is 36 square root 2. 
Now, when you go to multiply these two, the threes under the radical and the twos under the radical, they both have the same index, so multiply those, keep them underneath the radical. This gives you 36 square root six. You can't simplify the square root of six because it's only factors are two and three. So leave it the 36 square root six. For example, C, we're given two square root five minus four squared. For this one, I'm going to just rewrite it as 2 square root 5 minus 4 times 2 square root 5 minus 4. Now from here, I'm just going to FOIL. So 2 square root 5 times 2 square root 5, those numbers on the outside multiply, that gives us 4. Numbers on the inside multiply, that gives us 25. Now I have the 2 square root 5 times the negative 4. Numbers on the outside only, that's a negative 8 square root 5. Now the negative 4 times 2 square root 5, again, negative 8 square root 5. Next I have negative 4 times negative 4, which is a positive 16. From here, simplify your radicals if you can. The square root of 25 is 5, so this turns into 4 times 5 minus 8 square root 5 minus 8 square root 5 plus 16. That 4 times 5 gives us 20. From here, combine your like terms. The 20 and the 16 are like terms. It gives us 36. The negative 8 square root 5 and the negative 8 square root 5 are like terms. It gives us negative 16 square root 5. From here, we can't move any further. We don't have like terms. So our 36 plus 16 square root 5 is our answer. For example, D, we have the cube root of negative 4 times the cube root of 2 minus the cube root of 16. I want to try to simplify the cube root of 16 if I can. That 16 is 4 and 4. The 4 is 2 and 2. This 4 is also 2 and 2. We're looking for a group of 3. So this is going to be rewritten as the cube root of negative 4 times the cube root of 2 minus 2 cube root 2. The, two, the cube root of 2 minus 2 cube root 2, they're like terms, so combine them. Think of it as 1 cube root 2 minus 2 cube root 2. So 1 minus 2 gives us negative 1 cube root 2. We multiply that by the cube root of negative 4, and this is just going to give us the opposite, the negative 1, times the cube root of negative 4 times 2. That negative 4 times 2 gives us negative 8. So this is going to be the opposite, or negative 1, times the cube root of negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, so we're doing negative 2 times negative 1, which is just positive 2.